Judgment in the appeal, the application by Jason Lachlan for judicial review. Jason Lachlan stood trial before Belfast uh, Crown Court between the 6th of September 2011 and the 7th of February 2012. He was charged with 13 other men. The charges that they faced ranged from perverting the course of justice, possession of firearms, kidnapping, assault occasioning grievous bodily harm, to murder. The case against Mr. Lachlan was based exclusively on evidence given by two men. They were brothers. Their names were David and Robert Stewart. They claimed to have been associates of Mr. Lachlan and to have engaged with him and others in a long career of criminal activity as members of a paramilitary organization in Northern Ireland. That period, uh, it was said, uh, occurred between 1994 and 2008. Uh, unexpectedly, on the 4th of August 2008, uh, the Stuarts entered a police station in Northern Ireland and they there uh, confessed to having played a part in the murder of a man called Thomas English in 2000. They were interviewed uh, and they made written statements about their participation in that murder and their involvement in other crimes. In October 2008, they entered agreements with a specified prosecutor. The specified prosecutor uh, was an officer in the Public Prosecution Service of Northern Ireland, and by those agreements they undertook to assist in the investigation being conducted by the Police Service of Northern Ireland into offences relating to the murder of Thomas English on the 31st of October 2000, and other offences connected and unconnected with that murder. The agreements also required that the Stuarts participate in a debriefing process that they should provide all information available to them, that they should give a truthful account of the activities of uh, all others involved, uh, and uh, it was further stipulated that they plead guilty to the offences which they had admitted, and it was also required that they maintain continuous uh, and complete cooperation throughout the investigation and any consequent court proceedings. And finally, they were required to give truthful evidence in any court proceedings arising from the investigation. The agreements stated that failure to comply with their terms could result in any sentence that the Stuarts might receive being referred back to the court for review pursuant to Section 74 of the Serious Organised Crime and Police Act of 2005. In February 2010, the Stuarts pleaded guilty to aiding and abetting Mr. English's murder, and they also pleaded guilty to a number of other serious offences. On the 5th of March of that year, they were sentenced to life imprisonment. The judge stated that in normal circumstances, the tariff, that is the minimum period that they would be required to serve in prison for these offences, would be 22 years. He applied a 75% reduction on that notional tariff, however, taking account of the Stuarts' assistance under the 2005 Act. The judge then further reduced the period to be served in light of their guilty pleas and personal circumstances. The final effect was that the Stuarts were required to serve a minimum term of three years uh, before they could be considered for release on licence. Uh, taking into account the period that they had served on remand, they were both released on life licence on the 18th of August 2011. As a result of the information that the Stuarts had given the police, as I have said, Jason Lachlan and 13 others were arrested and charged with murder and other serious offences. They were tried by a judge sitting without a jury, and all but one of those defendants uh, were acquitted by the judge. The single defendant to be convicted was found guilty on the basis of evidence other than that given by the Stuarts. After the acquittal of these men, a review was undertaken by the Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions in Northern Ireland, 
Uh, that review was in relation to the Stuarts' compliance with the agreements that they had entered into, with a view to deciding whether their sentences should be referred back to the original sentencing court. The uh, Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions prepared a long report in which she reviewed the judge's judgment, uh, his account of the evidence given by the Stuarts, and the reasons uh, that he gave for rejecting that evidence. Uh, finally, she decided that the sentences passed on the Stuarts should not be referred back, and she gave her reasons for that decision. Uh, Mr. Lachlan challenged the Deputy Director's uh, decision by way of a judicial review. That application was heard by a divisional court in Belfast, and on the 25th of April 2015, that court upheld Mr. Lachlan's uh, challenge and ordered that the question of whether the sentences should be referred back had to be reconsidered. Uh, the Public Prosecution Service appealed the Divisional Court's judgment to this court, and the Supreme Court unanimously allows the appeal and dismisses Mr. Lachlan's application for judicial review. The reasons that we have allowed the appeal can be stated briefly. Section 74 of the 2005 Act requires that before deciding whether to refer a sentence passed on someone such as the Stuarts back to the sentencing court, a prosecutor must be satisfied that an assisting offender uh, had knowingly failed to comply with the terms of any agreement uh, which he or she had entered into with the prosecuting authorities. The Section 74 also requires that the prosecutor must be satisfied that it is in the interests of justice that the sentences be referred back. The Divisional Court had decided that the key question in deciding whether to refer a sentence back was whether circumstances had changed since the original sentence had been passed. And the prosecutor, said the Divisional Court, had to first consider if there had been such a change in circumstances, and if she considered that there had been, she was obliged to conclude that the interests of justice required that there be a reference back unless there were countervailing circumstances. This court decided that this was a wrong approach to require the prosecutor to sent, refer the sentence back on every occasion where there had been a change in circumstances would entail a reference in any instance of deviation, however slight uh, from the agreement. If that were the position, the requirement that the referral back should be in the interest of justice would have no meaningful content. Uh, this court has decided that consideration of the interest of justice involved an open-ended deliberation and that Section 74 does not impose any constraints on how the prosecutor should approach the question. In this case, the Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions had identified five factors relevant to her decision. Firstly, the nature and extent of the assistance that was in fact provided. Secondly, the time which had elapsed since the original sentence had been passed. Thirdly, whether the imposition of a revised sentence might be considered oppressive. Fourthly, the potential damage to public confidence in the justice system if a referral was not made. And finally, the prospects of a successful application to the reviewing court. All these factors were relevant to whether a referral back was in the interest of justice. Having carefully analyzed these factors in relation to the Stuarts, the prosecutor was entitled to conclude that the case should not be referred. The court is now adjourned.